Okay, we're good to go. I can't hear you, Deb. I think you're muted. There we go. That was shades of, of um, 2020 right there. Um, so going into our, can you, can you see the student, can you see the slideshow? Not yet. It says click to exit full screen. I think we're seeing there. Now we can see it. Okay. But when you go to slideshow. When I go to that, you can't see that. What? I can't see it. I don't know okay. about anybody else. Try, did you click slideshow? Yes. Okay. So let me let me try this again. I'm going to try to share my screen. Okay. Trying again. I'm going to try one more time, and then we'll okay. just we'll just wing it. It's all good. <laughs> you can share it with me and maybe I can share it too. That's okay. a, another possibility. Here we go. Share the window. Okay, now I see it, but I, it's not full screen. So when you click. Are we there? It still says click to exit full screen. What is everybody else seeing? Okay. So I'm just gonna go with this. This can you view? Can you see it? I on can. This view? I can see it. Yes. All right. I, We're just yeah, gonna go with this view. It's perfectly All right. visible. All right. Um, so when we're looking at managing student behavior, and Leah said I had all the answers, and um, everyone that I work with is laughing hysterically right now. So there you go. Um, so, uh, but I have been doing this. This is my 25th year in a school library, and. So I do have some certain things that I have learned along the way and certain mistakes that I've made that perhaps um, can help you not make those same mistakes. Um, the first one is to establish expectations and to keep our rules like simple and easy to follow. Um, when I first got here, I think my list of rules was like 20 rules and that's insane um, because you can't, the, kid, the kids can't even remember all of them. And so now my list of rules is pretty simple. Um, and, and this is our library's expectations for drop-in and study hall students. Typically during a school year, um, not so far this year, we haven't, we haven't got them um, all coming in just yet, but last year we were averaging about 430 students per day. Um, so it's a lot of kids dropping in um, and we want that. Um, and in order to do that, certain things just have to happen. Um, and so we're like, hey, these are our general rules, you know, be on time, we're not having, we don't have the food and drink. We had a, a small um, issue with that. So we're like, yeah, okay. Having their IDs, you know, the pretty basic rules. These are not hard for a high school student to follow and or for them to understand. Um, then we also reevaluate those rules with our students um, each year. So we have students who actually come in and, and serve on an advisory board and they go over the rules and talk about whether the rule is still necessary. And if it is, we keep it. And if it's not, we change it. And then sometimes they actually propose new rules. So we, we just get that student feedback, okay? Um, we also are looking at aligning our library values um, with our school and district values. So our school district is respect and responsibility, reading, research, and responsiveness. And by responsiveness, we need that, that the, if, if students are coming in and requiring things, then we're gonna to try to make certain that we they, we give our students what they need. Our, Leah, am, am I okay? Or can you hear and everything is all good? It's perfect. I can definitely hear you. It's all great. Are, so far, you just stop sharing. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try that again. Actually, I, I, you are sharing, but it was like you clicked off the... Um, the window Click the window okay. so sorry i'm just making certain that i'm i'm i because i can't see what what you are doing so i i, I apologize i'm just gonna no nope. i will that. i will jump in if something goes wrong and we can't hear you or thank see you, you i appreciate okay that. okay <laughs> all right so the next one is um redirecting students um and this is where i really do believe in getting into this issue of keeping calm and i'm not always yeah, you know, we don't always manage to do this 100%. I love this book by David Walsh, um, Why Do They Act That Way? 
um, it really talks about student brain growth and development and what how students are reacting and the parts of the brain that they are using. Um, what one of the things he talks about is that um, our students, even our most advanced, most wonderful AP level high school senior students are still operating with their brain function where they're going from their amygdala instead of from their frontal lobe, which means they are still in flight or fight all the time. And the, what they understand is anger and happy. And so anybody who's ever had a teenager who says, why are you yelling at me? And you didn't yell? That's because they're operating from the amygdala, not from their frontal lobe, all right? So one of the th ways to get around that, because they can't distinguish facial expressions, they have anger and happy, and they're not able to like process um, this, uh, the, the range of emotions that adults thinking humans have. And so one of the things that we try, try to do is to make certain that we are naming our emotions. So like, I am not angry that you are tilting that chair like that. I'm concerned that you are going to fall down and hurt your head, right? Like that's, that's a, it's helping them understand what that concern, what concern looks like. What, what, um, you know, I, I am, I'm a little worried about something um, here and, and, by giving them that range of emotion, we're then teaching them how to transfer from that part of their brain into the frontal lobe, okay? So it is, it's a great book if you have a teenager at home or just working with kids, this book, I, I can't speak highly enough of it because it really does talk about that. Like how do we actually approach the kid in a way that their brain is going to understand? Also keeping polite, the please and thank yous are important. Um, I say the Disney approach to saying no, because in, um, I was walking in Disney World one time and I have, I thought I had the, the layout right, I don't. Um, and uh, a Disney worker says to me, um, can I help you? And I say, yes, um, I'm trying to get to wherever, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean or something. And the, and the guy says, well, let me, um, I have a map in my pocket here for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to reverse your direction and you're going to go that way. And here you go. And I looked at him and I said, that was the nicest way possible of saying, hey, lady, you should have grabbed a map. And by the way, you're going the exact wrong direction. And so that's the way we want to say no to our students. Instead of, you know, absolutely not, you kind of look at them and say, say, you know, that's not going to work today, but I'll be happy to see you tomorrow. Like, you know, those kinds of things, right? So we're gonna really look forward to welcoming you back to the library tomorrow, things like that. Um, uh, two choices, sometimes give the kid two choices, both of which are acceptable to you. We can either do it this way or we can do it this way. Which way would you like? And that allows them to have some agency and gives them some choices. Um, and again, those two choices are both gonna be acceptable to you. And sometimes they'll try to offer a third, like a real true negotiator. And you'd be like, mm, that wasn't one of the choices I gave you. So let's, but if that third choice is actually okay, I mean, there's no, no problem with going with it, right? Um, as long as it is a choice that was acceptable to you. I like, name, like naming our emotions, don't get them confused. Using we in our language. Um, like that's not what we're doing today. You know, this is this is how we this is how we act in the library. This is this is what we're going to do today. Um, and then uh, the Ted Lasso idea of being a goldfish, um, and that means the goldfish is the happiest animal because the goldfish um, doesn't remember. So yesterday was yesterday, and today is today. And yesterday the kid may have been um, out of line and out of order and n not his best self or her best self, and Today is a new day and you're a goldfish. And so today we judge student behavior based on what they're doing in this moment, not what they did three days ago. And this one I think is super key that whatever we choose to do, um, remember to be consistent. All of our staff members should be on the same page. So if, and that, and they, they kids will know if we're not, okay? so. Like if I'm at the front desk and I tell a student, no, I'm sorry, that's that's not the rule. This, you know, we can't do this, but we can do this. Um, and they see that there's an inch, right? Just like kind of parenting. And they're gonna go over to the other parent, they're over to the other clerk, and they're gonna go, um, 
you know, well, she won't let me, or they won't even tell you that. They'll be like, well, can I do this? And if the answer is different, then there's going to be a problem. And so we have to be on the same page. We have to be consistent, back each other up and, and understand if you had to make an exception for a student to allow your staff, like let, let other staff member, members know why an exception was made so that that way there's no working against each other. You know, if I come out into the library and say, oh, hey, sweetie, you know, let's let's not do that. And they say, well, she doesn't mind. Yeah, that's that's not cool. We have to be consistent and and consistent for all kids. Because, and that's the other thing, there's sometimes people be like, but can't I? And I say, well, you know, um, I can't have different rules for kids who are my favorites like you are, you know, um, other than, you know, and other kids. I mean, that doesn't seem right, does it? And the kids will start to understand that pretty quickly. This is from Atomic Habits by James Clear, that we don't rise to the level of our goals, we fail to the level of our systems. And by that, like, just think about a basketball team. A basketball team, um, both people playing in a championship game, the, both teams show up and they both have the goal to win the championship. One team is gonna win, one team is not. One team's system worked and one team's system didn't work on, on that specific day for that specific team. Their goals were the same, their systems were the failure. And so when our systems are not working, that's when we would really end up having some student behavior. So when you're looking at, a, at your student behavior, understanding what your system might be, right? And understanding, okay, this is my system and this is what's working and what's not working. So the first thing is to establish those clear routines and systems. Um, the first thing to do is to look at your signage. Do students know where to go? Do students know what the expectations are? If students don't know, they can't they can't do it. Um, so first look at that system. Is the routine good? Is the system good? Is our, our expectations clear? This is an assignment that my, I got in graduate school and it was probably the most informing um, experience of my life, um, which was to go to a library where nobody knows me and ask an obscure question at a reference desk. And then like cataloging and understanding my emotions and how did I feel before and after the interaction and how did I know what expectations were of me okay what what how was I informed of that expectation in the space and then recognizing that every time my kids come into the library that's how they're feeling and so just understanding that as we go in and we also have to teach the behavior you want to see yes even for high school students um, and I'll be honest with you, I made this mistake this year. This year, I made this mistake with my freshman students. Um, I forgot to teach them what I wanted them to do. Um, they, were, they came in for book talks. They were going to go get their books off the shelf. And I did not set the expectations clear about things like running or yelling. And you don't think maybe you have to, but guess what? You do every time. And so like, hey, let's let's think about how we behave, where we're at, how our space works, um, just being kindly reminding them that these are the expectations. Um, but remembering that they're kids, they're children, even if they're taller than we are, even if they have full grown beards, even if they have tattoos, it does not matter. They are still children. And so um, I, we have to make certain that we are treating them you know, with respect as children and understanding they still need to be taught some things. And then this last one is super important for me because um, because I really believe it with like all of my heart. And that is that if a student wants your attention, they're going to get it. And um, if it's not in a positive way, they'll get it in a negative way. Uh, so, so understanding that they need, kids need to be seen, they need to be heard, they need to be, um, they need to be acknowledged. And if they're not, they will make certain that you see them. So just kind of keep that in mind as we, as you move forward. Okay. So ways to acknowledge positive behavior. First of all, I, I like to say things like, I'm sure you're going to do this right. I'm sure you've got this. Um, being specific in my praise, things like, thank you for holding the door. That was kind. Um, when I'm specific with my praise, um, it's not over the top, but it's it's like that behavior was really nice and I appreciated that, thank you. Um, 
And students internalize that pretty quickly. And they, they, they want that. They want to hear you say that to them as well when they hear you say it to another student. But you also don't go over the top for expected behavior because it feels inauthentic and it is, okay? Um, we praise authentically. We like actually appreciate things and actually, you know, show up as yourself too. Um, so it's not fake. It's not, it's not, it's not a, a facade. It is who you are and it is how you're showing up for the students as you are. Um, I do have like the usual bookmarks and giveaways and, and fun things to give to kids with stickers and et cetera, just as an incentive, you know, reading incentives and things like that. But really for positive, for behavior management, one of the things that um, I, I think that they like the most is when we sit with them and we actually just go to them. Each table gets acknowledged every day. Um, like, hey, this is what we're doing today in the library. Would you like to join? Um, I say it's like joining the intellectual party. Um, would you like to be invited? You're all invited to the intellectual party. If you would like to join, you are welcome to come here. Um, and then if we have a craft day or a game day, actually just spending the time with them. Um, again, being seen, being heard, being acknowledged. Um, this this can work wonders for positive attention and, and positive behavior management. My favorite phrases that I learned from daycare, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Miss Madeline Caselli from Madeline's Playhouse because Madeline taught me like all the things when my daughter was little. And she was, it was sort of like having a parenting coach. She's lovely. Um, but one of the things that she would always say is, would you be kind enough to? And literally that's how she approached like every, every um, interaction. Would, would you be kind enough to do this? Would you be kind enough to do this? And so the thing is that you're subscribing, like you're giving them that opportunity for kindness. And a lot of times kids will take it. Um, uh, Dr. Tim Duggan at um, Northeastern University um, taught me to always, before I teach a class, um, say, I'm glad you're here today and mean it. Like take a moment to acknowledge presence. Like, I'm glad, I, I'm glad you're here today. I hope to see you tomorrow. Um, those are those are things that that we kind of really emphasize with kids because sometimes you're the only person who said that they're ha you're happy they're here. Really, you're happy I'm here. Yes, I am actually glad to see you. Um, I could really use some help. Would you be kind enough to help me? And most of the time, yep, they will be. Okay. Telling them that they're the best part of your day, because if their students aren't the best part of your day, then we've done something wrong. Um, like this is not, this is honestly, my students are the best part of my day all the time. Um, thanks for making my day, please, thank you. And this is the one where it's like, is that library appropriate? <laughs> and you kind of look at them like, is that, is that library appropriate? You sure about that? And most of the time they know the answer to that is no ma'am and you say okay let's let's maybe let's maybe like shift that role let's let's maybe like move on to something that is library appropriate and so now those are my best tips um and, and tricks um but i'm certain that you might have some questions um about like specific things or specific issues that uh, how would I handle it or et cetera, or like what rules are important to me or versus you. And so I do wanna open it up for questions because obviously, you know, every library is different, every situation is different and, you know, you, you, we might all have to do that. So, okay, I'm gonna uh, stop. Could you repeat the book titles that you referenced? I just wanna make sure, I, I typed them in the chat, but I didn't get the authors. So I wanted to make sure that we list those. Sure. So the what, what, first one is Dr. David Walsh, and it's um, why do they act like that? Let me double check that. I'm going to try to un. There we go. Um, it is um, why do they act like that by Dr. David Walsh, and the other one is Atomic Habits by James Clear, and I'm going to put the. The chat, the presentation in the chat right now as well. So you all have it. Okay. Monica says, Debbie did a wonderful job taking this internal process and shining a light on it. Your thoughts and goals. I do appreciate that. I agree with her 100%. 
Um, do we have any questions in the chat? Does anybody have like a sticky situation with um, behavior in your library? Here's one thing that I always say about managing behavior in the library. And um, it's something that I, uh, I, I will die on this hill. Libraries should never be used for punishment. So if your administrators are taking kids who cannot behave in the regular classroom and be like saying, you know, just go hang out in the library until the bell rings. Don't let that happen if you could, if you can avoid it, because they've already then got a negative feeling associated with coming to the library. They're already primed to like be mad. Carolyn wants to know, where do you display your rules and expectations? So a couple of different places. The first thing I do is I go into like my study halls before they ever, like before we open for study for students, I, I go into every study hall and I'm like, hey, here's the duel. Here's the rest, here's the rules, here's their expectations. Then I have table tents on every table that sh that have those rules, okay? Um, so each table has a table tent and it's sitting right there in front of the students. Then we have a big poster. <laughs> As the kids are, are in the library, there's a big poster. So it's like, and then um, uh, we usually put them, put them on our website too. So it's like, it, it, it's just consistent, you know, consistent messaging. Um, but yeah, that, it, it, I like the table tents um, because you can literally, if you're going to the table and just kind of look at them and say, it's right here. It's literally right here, darling. You know, um, um, yeah, they can't fail to know the rules if you have the table tents. And yes, you can make them cute and you can have something fun on the on the one side and the rules on the other side. Um, uh, one of our library staff members made them super cute this year. I was really appreciative of that. So yeah, just but keep it consistent. Um, any other questions, like a sticky situation that you might have? Oh, yes, you do have, Monica's right. You do have to replace those every now and then. And by the way, that's like a statistically thing too, where if you change your, your signage every six weeks, then people notice it. So so taking those table tents and, and revamping them every six weeks or so, um, that, that's, otherwise they become stale and nobody notices them anymore. So revamping them every six weeks is, is kind of key too. Even if you just change the colors or change the order, I think mm -hmm. would bring people's attention to it again. Yep, you could have the rules on one side, but the, the other side changing, and then and then all of a sudden people will, will pay attention to them again. Mm -hmm. Caroline says they love a silly meme, so maybe adding memes. I used to have a library meme bulletin board because I love memes. My family makes so much fun of me because they're like, memes are the lowest <laughs> form of humor. I'm like, I don't care. I love a good meme. There's millions of library memes, and I have like this whole thing, you know, and like every day I would have people stopping by to see new memes that you add. So, yes, yes. Um, and anything you can do to be joke, like, to, to just make it a positive, fun thing, right? So so notice I try to say expectations instead of rules. I used to say rules all the time, and instead I, I switched to expectations, and wow, did that change. It just changed. Um, the Just the verbiage right there, um, and, and putting everything in like a kid-friendly language. So, you know, it's positive. It's not do not do this. It's please don't, you know, please do it this way. Um, you know, instead of don't be tardy, it's please be on time to the library. Um, so it's a flip of a flipping the script of the rule. The expectations are positive. Deb, do you have, is your schedule fixed or flexible or kind of a mix of both? Um, mine is, um, is both because um, one of the things that happens is I, I will do book talks for like all English classes. Um, and then, but then we'll also, um, during the regular school day, if there's not book talks going on, then it's a, a free drop in for any student who's in study hall, um, study hall or um, uh, before and after school is free access. So um, they can choose to come to us and we do a positive attendance so that we keep track of who's who's here. But yeah, so it's it's not fixed, but we do go into classes quite a bit. So um, I would just ask because one of the biggest successes I had with behavior is when I was on the flexible schedule so they could come down by their choice and my consequence for any bad behavior was always well you've less the privilege to be here today but you yeah. can try again tomorrow so I think yeah. that's a great way to approach 
um, it doesn't work if they're required to come down there and be there, but um, if no. you have a flexible schedule, you can do that. Monica yes, is saying, oh, go ahead, go ahead. And, 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 and also like having, and with that too, is making that clear with your administrative team, like our Dean's office is, you know, saying, okay, these are the rules in the library, right? Like this is, this is, this is what we expect our kids to do. And this is how it works. And, and then our administrative team coming back and saying, um, coming back and saying um, to, to, you know, to students, if they're, if they're truly not behaving appropriately, we, we are, we, we escort them to, to, to our, their Dean and then their Dean has to review the expectations with them. Um, yeah. I, I, the, uh, Brianna is, is saying our, our library is our study hall room. Oh yeah. Okay. So a lot of times, um, uh, that that happened to me my first couple of years. They overbooked the study hall rooms, and so they decided that our study our our library was was um, considered their study hall space, or, or you know was really we couldn't shut down because this is the study hall space, and this is where they're assigned. And so I would say, you know, first of all, I would try to make that if you can get it changed, get it changed. You know, you because that way you otherwise you can't have a class in the library. And that is is not great, um, but um, you could also um, embrace the fact that you have a captive audience at this moment and start um, really, you know, I, I do a daily activity with our students. Um, uh, our staff is great about they they go in and invite the kids to the intellectual party. They have a daily activity where you've got something for the kids to do every day. There's something library related every day, um, and you've got a captive audience, and so you might as well use it. Um, so yes, um, yep, and the, and that yeah, the 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 expectations are the same, um, you know, whether it's it's for the study hall or whether it's for for you know you're in the library, our expectations are the same, um, and and just have to embrace the fact that my I have a former principal who said you have to teach the kids who 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 show up right, so that's what you have to do. Yeah, it's, a it's good hard point. though. It it's is hard. hard. I, I like Monica's that, idea. She said, like, sometimes just a single word reminder instead of saying, don't put your feet on the table. She just says feet. And that's enough <laughs> without embarrassing <laughs> them, you know, to tell them they've right. got to pull their feet down or whatever. And I have a good friend, too. And I should have put this in here. And that is correct and uh, praise in public, correct in private. So if that's I'm going to so correct important. you, I'm going to walk over to your table. OK, if I'm going to praise you, I might say it in front of the group. So, yeah, um, I would also say that um, for as we get into revising our linking for learning, um, uh, one of the standards is that the library is has that flexible access. Um, and I don't know where that will fall into as in linking for learning. But one of the tools that I've been able to use is to be able to say, um, I want us to have an exemplary library and here's the standard. Here's the standard, and if we are assigning students to this room, then that standard cannot be, like, I can't be exemplary, and I want to be exemplary. And that's how I approached it with our administrative team. Okay, well, thank you so much, Deb. I forgot Absolutely. to say at the beginning how much I love Deb. She's my good friend, and I enjoy working with her so much, so I'm so delighted that she joined us here today. I am also thrilled that in the chat, everybody's exchanging emails so they can get together and talk about the problems that they may have in handling the study hall or handling behavior. So please do that. And then also, if you um, remember that you connected with somebody and you can't remember who it was, please reach out to me and I will be glad to connect you later. So what I'm going to do now is um, again, say thank you to Deb and I'm going to stop recording the session and then we're going to start again immediately with material selection for high school libraries with my other hey, good friend, Monica. Monica. So I'm gonna stop and then we will start again.